Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto to explain here, bringing you guys another board to Naruto Next Generation discussion. And today, I want to throw a curveball in regards to our discussions from the fallout from Boruto Chapter 75. After this latest chapter, where we learned everything from a model's origin story, his moto Sakawaki, and the Shiba Otsuki reveal, I think one aspect of the chapter that hasn't been discussed enough is the fact that when we really sit down and look at it, Jigen made the right call to have a model cyborg who had combat powers that go beyond. Jigen destroyed or in the case of Ada and Damon ordered to be destroyed and in the case of Code limiters placed onto them so as to not upset the balance of power inside the car organization taking things a step further though Amato's plan could have actually worked to take down Jigen and I wanted to look at why this is the brilliance of the plan how it fits into his motos and most importantly how this plan may or may not have been able to result in the eventual defeat of Ishiki Otsu and if it doesn't result in Ishiki's death, how Ishiki realistically could have came out on top. And there is a way for Ishiki to come out on top, and I will discuss in the video, obviously. So let's look at what we know for certain. Amato said that his motives for doing everything he did was to bring his dead daughter back to life. But once he learned Jigen's plan would result in bringing his daughter back to life, basically for her to die all over again on a dying planet, it led to Amato taking the opposite stance. Instead of helping Jigen, and he'd be trying to stop Jigen by sabotaging his vessel Kawaki by feeding Kawaki the Byakugan drugs to slow down the extraction process of Ishiki's karma to all the people he turned into cyborgs and by transplanting the DNA of Shibai into those cyborgs to give them Shibai's powers. By doing all of that, he hoped to be able to bring down Jigen. Look, from a tactical standpoint, my respect for Amato when I heard this went up a whole lot because of how brilliant the plan was considering that his plan B was already really well thought out which was brilliant but it left a lot up for luck namely Naruto and Sasuke being able to survive against Ishiki long enough that Ishiki's body would die out before he put the karma on karma while that was a great plan his plan a his original plan makes the most sense and it fits into his character it was calculated, it was methodical, and it left very little room for error, but it reeked of the desperation that one could expect from a father who's determined to right the wrong that was his daughter's death. Amato, at the very least, knew as much that if he helped Jigen, Jigen would feed himself to the Tentails, which kills Ishiki since Ishiki was physically inside of Jigen, and then Ishiki would be reborn. If his daughter was brought back to life, it'd only be a matter of time before she'd die again, or if they survived the chakra fruit harvestation, the world that she'd be coming back to would only be a barren wasteland, and he'd have to suffer from the fact of knowing that everything he did up until this point, it was all for nothing because his daughter would have died all over again, except this time it would have been because of him and not because of an illness, which potentially changes the way she even sees him in the first place before she dies all over again. However, this plan to bring down Jigen, I think it could have worked. I think it could have worked well. While we don't know all the powers he gave to the other cyborgs, nor do we know the names of the people that he turned into cyborgs, if we look at the information that we're given about Divine Jutsu, we at least have some idea of the power that they possess. One of them would have insane wind release powers that could generate wind storms with ease. The other could create lightning storms in the form of some type of insane lightning release, potentially controlling natural lightning altogether, which that is a hell of a problem for Jigen, in particular Jigen only because Jigen would not be able to absorb it using his karma seal though he could shrink. This makes a bit of a problem, especially when you add in Ada and Damon. Ada Semrigan it has no use for combat. The same with Ada's ability to control hearts. It has no use for combat in this situation because Jigen is Osuski genetically and Ishiki is an actual Osuski. But here's the thing, when Jigen shrinks himself down, she'd be able to see exactly where he is in real time, coordinate the attacks, with all the others and eventually bring down Jigen. If he goes into another dimension, Ada is able to watch him from that dimension in order to keep tabs on him. It makes taking Ada out the very first thing you have to do because she can't be allowed to live since she eliminates the very sneak attack element of your fighting style due to you not being able to hide from her eyesight and those sneak attacks play a huge role in Jigen's combat arsenal as well as Ishiki's combat arsenal. This means that Damon would have to be touching Ada the whole time in order to protect her with this reflection ability which on one hand means at least you don't have to worry about fighting Damon right away because he be guarding Ada but you still have at least two other cyborgs who if we say they're just as strong as Damon or at the very least they're just as strong as Code that still means that you have 
two people who are stronger than Jigen that you need to fight, who can speed blitz and dog walk you physical attacks. Damon showed that even using chakra rods as sneak attacks meant nothing in battle and is useless because Damon, without even trying, was able to catch all of Kawaki's chakra rods at point blank range. It's not a matter of if they defeat you, it's only a matter of when they defeat you. If you try to summon multiple chakra cubes, and isolate each spider one by one. Unless you have a way to prevent Ada from giving instructions, your sneak attacks are pointless. And even then, just with Jigen by himself, he's not gonna be able to win because of the strength and power difference. Also, given Jigen's body couldn't handle using Ishiki's chakra, even if it were to go this route, the body would begin to break down as a direct result of everything that happened regardless. At some point, Jigen would fall. This would mean that Ishiki would die inside of Jigen's body and Ishiki would have to be reborn into it since Kawaki's karma hasn't fully extracted yet. It then becomes a matter of keeping Kawaki away from Ishiki and waiting him out for another whole two days until the body shuts down or he's killed. Ishiki is much stronger than Jigen, much stronger than Jigen to a point where he was stated more than once to be on a different level than Jigen, but there are a couple of issues here. If Ishiki is in character, he's going to play around a little bit while fighting. Instead of hitting Naruto and Sasuke with fully powered blows, there was clearly enough restraint being placed into the attacks to drag the fight out for a much longer period of time in order to have fun with them because Ishiki, by his own words, has a bad habit of playing around with people that he fights. If he was being serious, he would have just hit them at full power, killed them immediately, gave Kawaki karma again, and ultimately, because he was playing around, it cost him in the end because instead of killing them right away, it gave Naruto time to use burial mode, and we all know what happened from there. If Ishiki plays around, it's a fatal mistake because each of these people would just dog walk Naruto and Sasuke in power. It'd be like if Kiba was challenging burial mode Naruto to a fight. He just explode the moment that Naruto most chakra. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point that I'm making here. Multiple fighters above Jigen, each with their own unique hacks abilities. It's a hell of a burden to go through in order to try and clear for victory if you're Ishiki Otsutsuki, especially if you fight them all at once. You'd have to use the chakra cubes in order to separate them so as to prevent them from ganging up on you to make the fight more manageable. Then you'd either have to fight them in that separated space between all the chakra cubes or you would have to pull a Kaguya and do as she did against Naruto and Sasuke and what Momoshiki was trying to do, which is fight them one at a time by taking one of them to another dimension and having the fight take place there, which is what Kaguya was successfully able to do, which is what Momoshiki in the Boruto movie novelization was desperately trying to do, split Naruto and Sasuke up. Then you have to return to the area where the battle is taking place in the first place and repeat the process all over again. You have to separate the others if they regroup. The problem with doing that is that Ishiki only has 48 hours to live. They're not going to just sit there and wait for him to come back. Those chakra cubes, they can be picked up and move if you're strong enough. And they're going to make a point to fight as a team the next time he appears. I can see why Ishiki from inside of Jigen's body pulled the plug on all these cyborgs because while it's not impossible to win, it's certainly a much harder job than you would like because it means you would have to work harder than you would anticipate. It means you have to waste chakra. It means you have to waste precious time needed to find Kawaki and give him the karma seal because once you kill Jigen, Kawaki's karma goes away. It also runs into the problem of if anyone with the brain thinks about it, they can just kill Kawaki before you even find him again leaving you out of the vessel and in the case of Ishiki he didn't know that Amado was trying to use Kawaki for that purpose so the idea of killing Kawaki would be something that hey Ishiki would look at and say Amado might be willing to do this now Ishiki was also right to shut this down and take the path of least resistance because under no circumstances could Amado's plan have been allowed to be implemented I still think Ishiki could have won I've laid out why I think this is despite the number advantages you see and the sheer number of people in a Jigen plus power level territory that you have to fight all at once but that's only if we assume there's only four or five people with powers above Jigen due to having Shiba's DNA transplanted just because if he isolated them one on one, there would be a gap in power and they'd be away from Ada. So a sneak attacks, they would work. If we get beyond four or five different people 
and say we get into dozens of people, I think you run into a problem. That's just way too much hacks to overcome with somebody that's a tier two below you. It actually explains why Kaguya thought to go this route during her battle with Naruto and Sasuke. Ishiki was her superior. Ishiki was somebody who she was around for a long time. So it would have been a learned behavior to go with that same method. However, that's a high bar to clear and it's better to just go the path of least resistance and keep a closer eye on a model just like Ishiki did from within Jigen. That being said, I'm curious to know you guys thoughts on this. Do you think a model, if he had a team of five cyborgs who is stronger than Jigen, but weaker than Ishiki, do you think they could have ultimately taken down Ishiki? Or do you think Ishiki would have been able to separate them in a one versus one setting and pick them off that way? While you think that over, click here to watch this Naruto Explain video or click here to watch this Kryptonian Saiyan video.